Hey guys, welcome to the first video in this series about our quantum tomography code. This code is written by Quiat Quantum Information Group at UIUC, and it's going to help people who want to run physical tomographies in either their lab or their personal setups. A lot of our resources are going to be on our website, which I'm going to include in the description. So on the tomography page, we have resources where you can learn about tomography, as well as journal articles, books, YouTube videos, everything you need in order to learn about tomography. If you scroll all the way down, we have different options for how you can use the code. You can use the Python code, the MATLAB, or an online interface where you don't even have to code at all and we just do everything for you. This video is going to cover the online interface as well as a little bit of the Python code that you can download but we won't be actually doing any Python code. We will just be using a command line tool that comes with our package. So we're going to jump right in. We click uh, open our tomography interface and you'll get pulled up with this screen. So in this example, I'm going to be inputting data that would correspond to two horizontally polarized photons. Right in the middle, we have our measurement faces that we projected our state onto in our tomography. So let's say in our perfect tomography setup, we project the state onto each measurement 500 times. So if we project our HH state on the HH basis, we should get 500 coincidences. So I've went ahead and inputted the rest of the data. You can also load the configuration and data files up here. Data files is going to contain all the information for here. And then configuration files is going to tell you if it's going to be single qubit or two qubit, and then the rest of the settings as well. You can see a sample data file up here, as well as a sample config file. But you can see it's essentially just Python code. And if we go back onto our web page, you can check out our reference guide. Here, this explains all of our methods and functions for our Python code. And then down at the bottom, it explains the configuration files, the data files, as well as an eval file. You have examples here. And the eval file is going to be the comp file and the data file combined. So it's just the text of the configuration file up here and then the data file here. All right, let's go back here. There's also many options over here on the left where you can input, implement settings about your setup. Maybe you use two detectors per qubit or you have a little bit of a faulty beam splitter and you want to uh, compensate for that, you can input the information into the crosstalk matrix. And we have other stuff like uh, at the end, you get properties of the state, such as the purity. So this error estimation will give you a more accurate value of that property and will also give you a standard deviation of how far away that property might actually be to your true state that you have. So we're gonna go ahead and click run. Here you can download the data that you just implemented. Maybe you wanna take this and uh, run it on the uh, Python, uh, but we're just gonna calculate tomography and get the results right back on the, on the internet. So it took a little bit of time to load just because we had three states that we were generating. Monte Carlo takes a little bit because we have to take all that data and reprocess it and do the tomography essentially multiple times. So up at the top, we have uh, pictures of our density matrix as well as the actual matrix. Down at the bottom, we have properties of our density matrix. You can hover over any one of them and see a little definition about it. The value is going to be the mean of our sample or just the value of our density matrix if we did no error estimation. And then since we did do error estimation, we have a standard deviation from our sample. So let's go back to our page where we can download our data. If we download the eval file, that contains both the data file and the comp file. And this is everything for Python. And that MATLAB file would be everything you need for MATLAB. All right, so I've downloaded this Python eval file. And I want to run tomography on this data and see that it contains everything that we just implemented. It's essentially the same information, but in this case, it's in a text file. So I want to run tomography on this, and I want the 
output to be in this folder here. So before we do anything, we have to install it with pip, and this is just like any other package that you would install. We would do pip install, and then the name of our uh, package, which is quantum-tomography. It's going to collect it, um, and hopefully it says successfully installed. And now we can use the command line tool to run tomography on this uh, text file. So the command line tool is just quantum-tomography. And you can do dash h. And this is a little helper method that will tell you all the parameters that you can put. So if you do dash i and then uh, path to your eval file, that's going to be the input that you're giving to the program. And then if you want to save it, you would do dash s and then the output folder or the output directory of where you want to save it. And then dash p will give you images of the density matrix. If you don't save it, but you do want pictures, the pictures will just pop up here. Um, but if you do save it, uh, whether or not you do pictures, there's going to be an HTML file. And if you don't include the pictures, there will not be any uh, JPEG files. So I want to do quantum dash tomography, put my import input as this Python email file. I'm going to do a relative import. So from here, I want to go to my desktop slash python eval.txt and I want to save it to my output folder. You can do relative or absolute uh, file paths. But I'm going to just do relative because it's easier right now. So desktop slash output and then for sake of time I'm not going to generate the pictures. Alright, we're going to run it. Here's our state. It's going to give us a little bit of a time so the properties can get printed out, but not that much. And then output save to here. Great. Let's take a look at what it produced. Give us this little folder with everything in it. If you do pictures, this is where the pictures are going to be saved. And then let's open this up. And then this looks just like what we had on the interface, except we don't have pictures. If you do have pictures, then they'll be right up here. And then we have the properties and then the errors because we did error estimation. And that's everything for the command line tool. Next video, we are going to be covering how to actually write Python code and use this library within Python. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.